These environments allow students to experience content on a more in-depth scale. For example, at the museum, students can be archaeologists and actually dig for dinosaur bones. At the zoo, they can explore the habitats of different animals to see how they live, what they eat, and how they look. And at the stockyards, they can experience real Texas history through cattle drives and tours of the old rail stations. Having a multi-sensory approach to instruction is a key aspect of community-centered learning environments. How does this approach benefit students with intellectual disabilities? Um, I think having a multi-sensory hands-on approach um, can really help students connect with material that they're learning about. Anytime that you can see a picture of something, hear a story about something, and then actually hands-on interact with it, it makes it much more meaningful. Sensory tables like this one are one approach to multisensory instruction. They can be filled with a variety of things for students to explore, including water, sand, or even ground coffee. How is learning in the community beneficial? Learning in the community is highly beneficial for B because it allows her to practice her social skills. Since students with special needs require extra instruction to develop social skills, learning in the community allows them to foster these skills by interacting with people in these environments. When it comes to students with special needs, community-centered learning environments help these students build their academic content knowledge as well as their social skills. B, what were you learning today at the grocery store? Carol's and Mommy. From the standpoint of the child, the great waste in school comes from his inability to utilize the experience he gets outside, while on the other hand, he is unable to apply in daily life what he is learning in school. That is the isolation of the school. It's isolation from life. John Dewey